Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to St George's uh, on this celebration of Creation Tide. I think it's Trinity 17 as well. Um, but today is the day when the church celebrates the life and work of St Francis. And um, as I will say in a few minutes, um, this is the newest season in the church. And actually, today marks the conclusion of Creation Tide. Uh, so on St Francis Day, it seems like to me like a good day to mark it, so we will do that today. Um, there's a special prize of a small bar of chocolate to any members of the congregation who are here early, listening to the bird song that was playing instead of the music, and who can identify all 31 of the bird songs that were played. Just let me know if you've got all 31. Eric is one of them. Probably not expecting great things of you. Um, before we start uh, the other notices, just to say congratulations to everybody who has been here for the last couple of weeks. We managed to raise an astonishing £443 from Macmillan, uh, not having been able to have our coffee morning, but just through donations at the door. So if you're able to support Macmillan uh, in one of those donations, well done and thank you. Uh, so we've done very well, £443. If you haven't been here and you would like to support Macmillan, um, one of their boxes remains. You're not supposed to go out that, that way, but if you're sneaking quietly and in a safe and distanced fashion at the end of the service to make a contribution, that's fine. Um, what is out there also is the basket for harvest donations, which we're celebrating next week, but in case you're not able to be here next week, we'd like to make a donation to the food banks around us, both at Mallon Road and at St George's School. Then that basket is there as well. So um, again, be careful if you need to go back to the basket. Um, there is a basket by the door on the way out if you want to drop donations in there. In no particular order, the notices are to remind you that the annual parish meeting is going to happen on the 22nd of October at 8 o'clock here at St George's. This is a formal meeting, uh, as you've heard me say before, it's not the sort of thing uh, which is overwhelmed with attendance usually, and I'm not necessarily expecting huge numbers of people to turn out for that. Uh, it's very much a formality. Uh, we have vacancies for various positions and happily sufficient numbers of people offering for themselves to stand. Uh, but if you want to stand, let me know. I would be particularly keen to hear from anybody who's very enthusiastic about the deanery, because we're short, surprisingly enough, of deanery synod representatives. So if you'd like to be a deanery synod rep, have a word with me, because we've got two spare spaces. Our Thursday evening services at the chapel resume this Thursday at 6.30 in the evening. You're very welcome to join us for that. It's a lovely opportunity to be still and quiet at our venue in South Road at the chapel at former Christ Church. So please do join us on Thursday at 6.30 if you'd like to or at any point. Harvest I mentioned next Sunday. Um, one of the things that's emerged this week is the need to pay attention to the children and young families in our community and recognising the fact that although we do get some beautifully behaved children who are willing to sit quietly through an essentially adult service sometimes, um, that's hard work for them, even though it is by and large a shorter service these days. So what we would like to do is explore what we can do and how we can be church for our children and young families hereafter. Um, I have in mind a specific service for children and young families. It's not something I really like to do. I'd rather everybody was joined together and children and young families were made to feel they could participate and be part of our general life and worship together. But I think in these days and at this moment, it might be a good thing to do something specific. Halfway through the week, I think I, we had settled on the possibility of doing something via Zoom for the young people on a regular basis. But actually, on reflection, and indeed uh, speaking to some of my colleagues in the deanery, I think it might be possible to do something physical in church. But I'd be very pleased to hear from anybody who's got skin in the game, as it were. So if you are involved with children, you have young children, uh, you know young children who might be interested in the possibility of something for them at St George's, I'd be very pleased to hear when we might do this, when it would be a good time for you. I have some idea about what it might be, but I'd be happy to consult and talk to you about that, um, and, and how often. So if that's you, please be in touch, either by phone or email, and we'll have a little bit of consultation before I launch out on my own without having spoken to anybody, thinking that I know best. 
So if you have a connection with children and young people, please be in touch and have a word. Uh, indeed, if you're not immediately in touch with children and young people and got some good ideas, also please give me a ring or, or send me an email. But we're hoping to start that fairly soon. Um, I think the last thing to say this morning is that All Souls is coming up on the 2nd of November. I'm not going to put out lists for names this year for fairly obvious reasons. So if you've got somebody, people who'd like to be remembered at All Souls, which we will be doing very much in this sort of configuration on the 2nd of November, a few rows fewer at the very front probably to allow some candle lighting, um, we will be having our service on the 2nd at 8 o'clock. Uh, please let me have names that you'd like to be remembered, again, either by phone or email, or text indeed, that would be fine. Thank you. We begin with Graham singing our first song. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. The burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia. so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along. Oh, praise him, alleluia, the rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice.
So we say to God, loving God, who has sinned against you and against our name, in thought and word and in deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and turn from our weakness and failures for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Father, to God be glory for them. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus, to God be glory for them. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. We collect and read the four creation. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace through all the days of our life.
And God said, Let the land be given to the creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that live along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may watch over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Female and male, he created them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. We're going to sing a gradual song which we welcome in the gospel. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is full of compassion and love, slow to anger, rich in grace. He has not dealt with us after our sins nor repaid us for all our faults. The Lord is compassion and love. As far as east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. As a father has pity on his sons, so the Lord has mercy on his own. The Lord is compassion and love. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have their storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labour or spin. Yes, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek the kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. 
Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. The name of God, the one who makes us, the one who inspires us, the one who moves us. Amen. Amen. This day. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And a reminder from our reading from the book of Genesis, every single thing that God makes is seen by God and is good. Everything is good. One of the main reasons why five years ago I started looking for a move from Christchurch, West Wimbledon, and eventually came to St George's, <coughs> was a growing dismay at the way that so many people who lived in the parish were becoming increasingly detached from the world. Okay. Too many lived behind gated compounds, <coughs> move around in their hermetically sealed four by fours, never walk anywhere, never pop to the shops, meet their neighbours, and certainly very rarely came to church. Perhaps worse was an inclination when they did meet one another, when they did meet another human being, to make sure that those they encountered came from the same gated, big car, private school, private club, wealthy, comfortable club as they did. Not everybody, some. Too much insularity, not enough connection. What a lot of these parent parishioners needed, I would like to suggest, should it have been possible to communicate with them at all, was a good rendition of the story of St. Francis of Assisi, whose day we remember and celebrate today. Now, of course, the good people of the Avenue and Cox Hill and Wimbledon Park Crescent aren't the only ones of becoming cut off from the world. Amongst the increasing numbers of youngies and city boys in and around Forest Hill, there are plenty who don't want to have to do with the grubby, thank you very much. And I'm the same too, with my nice Volvo and my nice house and my two-car driveway and my moaning that next door neighbor's car is making it difficult for me to reverse out in my French holidays. I'm quite capable of becoming as separated from the world as anybody else. It's really easy, in fact, to be like Pietro di Bernardoni de Morricone, Francis's father, I'm sure he was. Pietro was a wealthy cloth merchant, and he lived a very comfortable life in Assisi. And Francis's early life, as a child and a young man, involved very nice clothes, lots of lovely parties, and generally living it up with all of his father's love. In 1202, Francis joined the army, and the army went off to battle against the city-state of Perugia, and Francis was imprisoned in that battle, and remained a prisoner for a year. It's indicative, probably, of the lumpy relationship Francis, Francis always had with his father, that it actually took his father a year to pay the ransom that the Perugians were asking for Francis. And so he sat in prison in Perugia for that year, during which time he had plenty of opportunity to think. It is said that Francis received a number of visions in these days. And certainly, after his military career, he developed a growing distaste for worldly pleasures. <clears throat> Soon after leaving the military, Francis made a pilgrimage to Rome, and whilst he was there, he noticed especially the lives of the poor, paid attention to the many, many beggars in the street of the impressive capital city. At home, one day, saying some prayers, in the broken down church of San Damiano, which I imagine some of you will have visited. Francis is said to have received a vision 
in which he heard God speak to him and say, Rebuild my house, which is falling into ruins. Apparently Francis interpreted this vision and this call physically and immediately and understood it as an invitation to physically rebuild the church of San Damiano. And his first job was to steal some funds from his father in order to buy materials to rebuild the church. So St Francis set off rebuilding the church of San Damiano. His father found out what he'd done and was outraged. And again, Francis spent some time in prison, this time locked up by his father, it seems. Interestingly, also indicative of the whole family relationship, it seems his mother released him after his father had locked him up. And once she let him go, Francis decided that he'd had enough of his wealthy family entirely. And so he renounced his inheritance, in public, it is said, by taking off all his clothes, it is said. But he decided that now he was going to live a life of poverty and penitence. And over the next two years, spent his time actually begging for physical materials with which to rebuild the church at San Damiano, which is what he did in those two years. And subsequently lived a life of the itinerant, moving around, the poor friar, attracted, he attracted others to this way of life, and his community walked around, wandering, preaching simplicity, connecting, reconnecting perhaps, with the world, with nature and the people in it. Of course, one of the most famous stories of St Francis is that he is supposed to have been preaching to the birds. I said to the children at uh, St George's school on Thursday that there's a lovely story of the Gubbio wolf, where Francis is supposed to have been called in to save the people of Gubbio from a wolf that was menacing the tower, and Francis wouldn't have a quiet word, and the wolf went away, it is said. But Francis certainly lived the life of simplicity out in the world and not in the safe palaces of the wealthy in Assisi. Collecting his brothers together, Francis needed permission from the Pope in Rome to create a new order in the church, and he walked to Rome to seek that permission. There are all sorts of interesting uh, fictional tellings of the encounter between the Pope and Francis, but it was certainly a clash of cultures, for the church in Rome in those days was certainly bequeathed with wealth, dripping with diamonds and gold, a very established and powerful and wealthy institution. And Francis, in his ranks, came into conflict with a number of people in the structures of the church who didn't really like the idea of the church looking like Francis. In the end, the Pope gave Francis his permission, and so Francis and his community was allowed to exist. Francis died in the year 1226, and his community flourished and continues to flourish today. There are Franciscans, Roman Catholic and Anglican, and uh, Lutheran indeed, around the world. And today is his day, as I've said already. He appears mysteriously to be absent from this year's lecture, uh, but it is October 4th, Francis's day. And today also, as I've said in the, in the notices this morning, is the concluding Sunday of the church's newest season of creation time. We are invited, as the people of God, to respond to the climate and ecological crisis that surrounds us. We have an exhortation to be green, to save the planet, reduce, reuse, recycle. We are called to come to the aid of the natural world. And I'd like to suggest that the very first thing we have to do, perhaps the easiest thing for all of us to do, sometimes feeling overwhelmed by the whole business of trying to save the planet on our own, the first thing is to do what Francis did, which is to simply pay attention to the world around us. Too many people in modern, urban and suburban 21st century life have become cut off not only from the natural world, but from each other. We tend to be suspicious or even fearful of each other, maybe more so at the moment and in ordinary times. The story of Francis urges us to reconnect, and reconnecting with the world is the quintessentially Christ-like task. God reconnects with all of us who have wandered away from God, 
by coming in Christ to be with us, to love us back home, to reconcile. Francis modelled his whole life on Christ's, paying no heed to possessions or wealth or power or status, and crucially, paying attention to God, present first in the world and the people around us. This creation time, then, we are reminded how easy it is to become cut off, sometimes by our wealth and our pursuit of it, but sometimes also by our anxiety and our little fears and cares that pull us away from the presence and the greatness of God all around us. How lovely, how marvellous it would be if when we needed such reconnection, we could simply, like Francis, wander off into the beauty and the splendour of the Umbrian hills around the sea. But we've got Catford and Sydney and Manuel and we are the places around here. And I say, go out anyway. On Thursday's assembly, uh, I gave the kids homework to do. I asked them how many of them had noticed wildlife on their way to uh, school, whether they'd seen <coughs> elephants or leopards or tigers. Several of the children had seen such things, of course, on their way in. But I pointed out that actually the likelihood was that as they made their way home, they would encounter the natural world and ask them to see, <coughs> to remember what they saw of the natural world on their way home. Might they see foxes? Too many bloody foxes around here. Yeah. Might they see squirrels, or magpies, or sparrows, or daddy longlegs, or lazy wasps, or wood lice? They would certainly see trees, the wind, and the rain. We are surrounded, inescapably, even here, by the splendours of God's creation. If we fail to reconnect with the world around us, we will continue to destroy it. Let us be Franciscans, therefore. Make our priority a Christ-like reconnection with the world and the people around us. Pay attention first, for this is the first step to saving the planet.
door de los der Amazon nooit de toekomst te worden. Maar jij vangt refuge en de chance te rebuild their lives. We ask you to watch over the right workers and relief organizations working in difficult and dangerous conditions throughout the world. We think of everyone running the marathon today to raise money for charities to support this work. You have called us to be one, to live in unity and harmony, yet we are divided, race from race, faith from faith, rich from poor, old from young, neighbor from neighbor. Break down the walls that separate us. Tear down the fences of indifference and hatred. Forgive us the sins that divide us. Free us from crime and self-seeking. Overcome our prejudices and fears. Give us courage to open ourselves to others by the power of your spirit to make us one. Lord, in your mercy, we hear our prayer. We pray for the rest of the Let us remember those who are sick or suffering, especially those suffering from coronavirus across the world, and anyone known to us personally, especially Bart and June and Betty and Sheila and June and Caroline and Louisa and John and Alistair and Sarah and Paul. Look down on us in our infirmities and help us to bear our passion. And we pray for those who have died recently, especially early in the day, and anyone else known to us. And for those whose years mind occurs at this time, for ten days, may they rest in peace and mm -hmm. go out of the world. Do not be afraid, I will say. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through deep waters, I will be with you. Your troubles will not only be with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, and our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus stood with his friends and said, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> May in our faces we offer one another a sign of Christ. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. God is here, the Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, and lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, for all your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You come to meet us in Christ, welcome us as your children, and prepare a table where we might sit and eat with you. In Jesus, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms upon the cross, and with a love stronger than death, he made for all a perfect sacrifice for sin. The night before he died, he came to table with his friends, and taking bread, he gave me thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of God. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we bless you. You are the true God. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is our life. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, send your Holy Spirit on us now. May this bread and this wine be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us to know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the song of hell, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed is the Lord. Blessed is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed, blessed, blessed is the Lord. Spirit of life, help us to work together for the day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Francis, George, Michael, and all the saints, to be with you forever at your table in heaven, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, loving God, forever and ever. Amen. We say together the prayer Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ. Yeah. We are one body, we are one body because we all share in the body of Christ. Jesus, now our God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear up our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Everybody here this morning is welcome to come and receive the bread, or if you prefer to come and receive God's blessing. In which case, please keep your hands down in front of us.
when your father made the world before that world was old. In his eye what he had made was lovely to behold. Help our people to care for your world. The world is a garden you made and you the one who planted the seed. The world is a garden you made, a life for our food, life for our joy, life we could kill with our selfish greed. And the world that he had made, the seas, the rocks, the air, all the creatures and the plants he gave into our care. Help your people to care for your world. The world is a garden you made, and you are the one who planted the seed. The world is a garden you made, a life for our food, life for our joy life we could kill with our selfish greed. When you walked in Galilee, you said your father knows. When each tiny sparrow dies, each fragile lily grows. Help your people to care for your world. The world is a garden you made, and you are the one who planted the seed. The world is a garden you made, a life for our food, life for our joy, life we could kill with our selfish greed. And the children of the earth like sheep within the fold, should have food enough to eat and shelter from the cold. Help your people to care for your world. The world is a garden you made, and you are the one who planted the seed. The world is a garden you made, a life for our food, life for our joy, life we could kill with our selfish greed. The world is a garden you made, and you are the one who planted the seed. Your world is a garden you made, a life for our food, life for our joy, Life we could kill with our selfish greed.